Hi, I'm Professor Shivapanchakshari. In this video, I'm going to explain about symmetric property of S matrix. So we know that S matrix is used to analyze a micro network or a device. The S matrix has certain useful properties. One among them is symmetric property, which is applicable to reciprocal network. So in a multi-port network, if you consider any two ports, let us say eighth port, and the jth port, then the transmission characteristics of the junction for these two ports is given by the S parameters, that is SIJ and SJI. SIJ stands for transmission coefficient for the traveling value moving from J port to I port. Similarly, SJI stands for the transmission coefficient for the traveling wave moving from I port to J port. So SIJ and SJI will be usually different for a micro network, but if these two are same, equal, that is, if SIJ is equal to SJI, then the transmission characteristics for the wave traveling in either direction, either direction will be equal. Then the network is said to be reciprocal. So in a reciprocal network, the transmission characteristic remains same when the wave is traveling from eighth port to jth port and jth port to eighth port. So that is the point. So now we have to prove that for a reciprocal network, these parameters, what I've mentioned here, are equal. So this is the property called symmetric property of microwave network. So now I'm going to state and prove the symmetric property of S matrix. Let us start with the statement. For a reciprocal network, for a reciprocal network, are a simple device at microwave frequencies micro frequencies the s matrix is symmetric So, if the device is reciprocal, then S matrix is symmetric. Its converse is also true. If the S matrix is symmetric for a particular device, then the device is reciprocal. Either way, you can put it. So, mathematically, the 
I can state this as the transpose of S matrix is equal to the S matrix itself. That means if the transpose and the S matrix are same, then S matrix is symmetry. R, the element in this S matrix denoted by Sij is equal to Sji, then we say that S matrix is symmetric. So these two equations say same thing. So the first equation is the statement in matrix form, second one in the element form. So we shall prove this. To prove this property, I'm going to take the help of Z matrix or Y's matrix. So what is that Z matrix and Y matrix? Because we know that Z and Y matrices are symmetric. We know that Z and Y matrices are symmetric. For reciprocal microwave network. Reciprocal microwave networks. Okay. Z and Y matrices can be used if the reference planes, reference planes are fixed for each port of the network. Assuming that reference planes are defined, Z and Y matrices are taken as symmetric for the reciprocal micro network. So therefore, we can use this relation to prove this property. V equal to Z to I. Where B stands for the voltage wave at a particular port. So V matrix contains all the voltage waves present in the given microwave network. Similarly, I matrix is the matrix containing all the current waves in the microwave network. Z matrix gives us the impedance offered by the microwave network for the waves traveling in the microwave network. So, in the next step, I would like to split this voltage wave and current waves into the incident and reflective waves. We know that, so we know that a voltage wave at a port consists of two waves, incident and reflected, if the particular port is not matched. Assuming all the ports are not perfectly matched, <clears throat> I can take V as V plus plus V minus, and I as I plus plus I minus. Here, the plus sign indicates incident wave minus the reflected wave. But when you write equation for current in terms of voltage, we can use this relation, V plus divided by Z naught minus V minus divided by Z naught. So I've placed minus sign between the term, the last equation because, so when you take a transmission line, which is used to couple a device to another device, 
you can find two ways. One is gradient wave traveling from source end to node end. And we can take reflected wave, which is returning back towards source end from the load end. So the polarity of them will be same. Even after reflection, the voltage wave will not undergo any change in its polarity. But when energy is expressed in the form of current, then incident current is I plus. Reflected current psi minus will be having opposite polarity to the voltage. That means this will be minus and I minus R and a phase shift of 180 degree with respect to each other. Okay, that means after reflection, current changes its phase by 180 degree, whereas voltage doesn't change the phase by 180 degree. So, according to this argument, these polarities have to be carefully used. So, here in the equation, what I have taken, I would like to replace B by V plus matrix and V minus matrix. So similarly, the current matrix is replaced by I plus and I minus matrices. So now I would like to solve this problem in terms of voltage. So let us keep every thing in terms of voltage. That means current I plus will be replaced by V plus by Z naught. Z naught is the characteristic impedance of the network. I minus is by V minus by Z naught with negative sign. So now we have to solve this further. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to introduce normalized values of voltage or current. That means we have there are normalized values of voltage that is A, which is given by V plus by root Z naught. Z naught is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line or the port, whatever it is, or even the junction network, whatever it is. Z naught is the characteristic impedance which is constant for the network. So root Z naught stands for a number. So V plus is normalized by dividing it by this number root Z naught. Similarly, I can introduce another normalized value of voltage that is V minus by root Z naught. So A and B will help us to simplify the mathematics. So now, if I get back to the derivation, so in place of V plus, I'm writing root Z naught into A matrix. So this is with respect to this one. So in place of V plus matrix, I'm writing root Z naught into A matrix. Root Z naught being a number, a scalar value, it doesn't represent a matrix. Similarly for B, it is root Z naught into B matrix. On the right side, we have Z matrix, flower bracket. So here also for V plus, root Z naught A matrix divided by Z naught minus root Z naught B matrix divided by Z naught. So I replaced all the incident and reflected 
voltage waves by their normalized waves. So next is simplification. The root Z naught on the left side is taken out and placed on the right side. Z matrix is already there. Here, what happens if these two terms, if you simplify, so you are going to have one by root Z naught A minus B. More step. So this becomes simply Z naught. And now I would like to place Z matrix with A and P. So now it's time to group terms containing A and terms containing B together. So what happened next? Let us take all the terms containing B to the left side. Then Z matrix into B matrix becomes plus when it comes to right side. So this B matrix is already there. This will represent this one. Right. So when it is coming, you have to take care of this Z not also. Z not also, you need not to leave it. Is equal to. So on the right side, what happens? It's going to be one by Z naught into Z into A minus A. This minus A comes from the left side to the right side. Left side to the right side. So now let us see what happens. Now, let us take B out from the left side. So use the unitary matrix and on the right side, same thing happens. Minus U matrix. When A is taken out. So A and B are taken out as common factor on left side and right side respectively. Use the unit matrix, unitary matrix. So now I would like to keep the term with this bracket of the left side to the right side. I would like to put it to the right side. So, so for that what I'm going to do is I'll multiply on both sides. Let us pre-multiply. On both sides. Z 
by the term z matrix by z art plus u inverse this inverse is because i want to cancel this term by multiplying with this in its inverse so that i can get only b on the left side then what we get on the left side is only b so on the right side since it is a pre multiplication we have to place this inverse as the first term on the right side inverse then the second term minus u into a matrix so what we have done here you have placed this term to the right side in the form of this inverse so now i would like to name this equation as one next we have the standard relation between matrix b and matrix a in the form of b is equal to s and t we have this relation so if you compare these equations 1 and 2 we can get an expression for s this a is here and b the rest of the terms represent s so i can write s matrix as z matrix by z not plus u matrix inverse then z by z not minus u matrix so this these two terms give us f matrix so we can also go one more step by taking the z not out so that we can manage later or you can simplify here itself if you take out uh, one by z not inverse here yeah, then what is left here is z matrix plus z not into u matrix z not is a number similarly here also we can take out one by z not then we are left with u matrix so now we can cancel these two terms to get s matrix as s is equal to z matrix plus z not into u matrix inverse z minus z not into u so this expression gives us the relation between s matrix and z matrix so this is the relation between s and z matrix so now it's time to apply it's time to apply the given property of the microwave network that is reciprocal so now what we can write here is for reciprocal network
So for reciprocal networks, the Z matrix is symmetric. Z matrix is symmetric. That means the transpose is equal to Z matrix and also U matrix is also symmetric. So your U matrix is, so that is unitary matrix. So the unitary matrix is always symmetric. So that's why for the reciprocal nets, these two are already symmetric. So I will take the help of these two equations to proceed further. So now I'll take transpose, taking transpose. of the above equation. So we can give some number for that equation. Equation number three it is. So this is our equation three. Taking the transpose of equation three. So we get a relation. S transpose is equal to, so we'll take the help of equation number three, let us move slightly, yes, it's visible. <coughs> so S transpose is equal to, eight. look at this, in place of Z, can take the transpose, Z transpose, Z naught is a scalar, then U transpose inverse. Similarly, Z is replaced by Z transpose and U is replaced by U transpose. So taking transpose on both the sides of equation three, finally I got it. Okay. Since Z transpose and Z are same, U transpose and U are same, I'm going to get the equation now. The transpose becomes Z. Z not into U transpose becomes U minus. Here the transpose is Z minus Z not into U transpose. So we shall call this equation number four. Now, if you compare equations three and four, we get the relation S transpose is equal to S. The right hand side of the equations three and four are seen. So S transpose is equal to S. That means S matrix is symmetric. S matrix is symmetric. Since S matrix is symmetric, we can write the elements in the S matrix as SIJ is equal to SGI. So by interchanging the rows and columns of the S matrix, will get the symmetry. So we approved that for reciprocal network. This matrix is symmetry, hence the proof. That's it. Thank you.